Hello and welcome to my channel. Um, in this video I'm going to show you how you can very easily back up a Ubuntu Linux system or any Linux distro for that matter using a program called Timeshift and using this gives me confidence that I'm, if I mess things up I can roll back to a state where the system worked. So <clears throat> of course the first thing to do is to install the program or the app or whatever which is called Timeshift so um, I'm just going to I'm going to type it in here. T. <clears throat> so time shift. You don't have to press enter. It's found it. I'm going to install this. And yeah, system restore utility for Linux. Make sure it's the original one, not somebody else's version, perhaps. And uh, this is the official version. Sometimes you see unofficial versions of things in some um, repositories. Anyway, install <clears throat> uh, password. <clears throat> So this, this system is now installing TimeShift, and this allows you to roll back the system to a previous point in time um, if you've messed things up. And this means I'm not afraid to make big changes and do stuff because I can always recover by rolling back. So um, <clears throat> down here, we should see that TimeShift has been installed, and I'm going to put it on my uh, um, panel, whatever it's called, add to favorites, because I often <clears throat> like to refer to it and use it and it needs a password to run. So first of all, it has to be set up because <clears throat> this is the first time it's run. Let me just minimize that to make things look, oh no, that's part of this, okay. <clears throat> so um, snapshot type, just leave most of the things I leave to default. So using the rsync uh, file um, system is fine. Click next. And first of all, it has to calculate and see <clears throat> what files there are, how big they are, what drives there are. If you had more disk drives, or maybe a USB stick or some external drive connected to the computer, you'd see those as well. And <clears throat> you can locate on those um, other drives, so you can back up to a, an external hard drive or um, a NAS or whatever you've got, <clears throat> or just a USB device plugged in, so that if you really mess up your computer and you can't even run this program, um, you can, you've still got a backup of it, you can restore in other ways, but I won't go into that. So um, this is going to locate the snapshots that are taken on this drive, which is the internal drive inside the computer, which happens to be a laptop. <clears throat> that's the size of the hard drive and that's how much space is free on it, which is plenty. So next, you can have um, <clears throat> automatic snapshots and I leave it set to daily so that every day it makes a snapshot in case I forget to do it. Um, but quite often if I've managed to make something work and I want to save my work, then I do a manual snapshot, as you'll see. So let's go to next. <clears throat> um, it's currently set by default to exclude the files in these directories. And this is because these are the, the user files, like documents, and videos, music, whatever you've downloaded, and these will be excluded. So it means that when you um, restore after some failure, you can restore a backup. Of course, if these were in, the state of these was included, when you restore it, they'd be missing because they weren't there at the time you backed it up. And maybe you don't want to lose your data like that. So by leaving it like this, um, your data will be preserved even when you roll back to a previous version of the system that you've backed up. Uh, usually, I, um, <clears throat> I don't care about that. So I include all the files, but that's a choice for you to make whether you want those backed up or not. Anyway, let's click next. Uh, oh, complete, finished. So that's done. And um, so it's it's running and uh, it's set to auto <clears throat> backup. Let's create a backup right now. The first time will take longer because it's the first time it's done it. So it's got to count all the files and, and back up all of the files in the system. And as you see, it's going to take a long time, about uh, 40 seconds. So. Um, Depending on what you've done between backups, this time may get shorter or longer. Anyway, it's doing its backup and it's going to save the file. If you look at the size of the drive, <clears throat> free, 238 gigabytes is free at the moment. And after it's saved that backup file, then probably that should reduce to 228. So then you've just used 10 gigabytes of your hard drive, which is a lot. But that's the backup of the whole Linux system installed on this machine. and. The next time you do a backup, the amount of space used will be much, much smaller because the majority of the files are already here. <clears throat> it's an incremental backup system. So um, that's done. Um, you can 
what I do is I put a comment here because I want to know what that is, the state of the machine. So it was, what was it? It was a fresh, um, fresh install that I did <clears throat> and it's configured. So that means I've set up some of the system settings I like to have so I know uh, the state of the machine. <clears throat> Press enter. So uh, as I build up a list of backups and I want to go back to a particular point in time, <clears throat> I know where to go. This is very similar to the um, Mac OS system called um, Time Machine, I think. Same kind of thing. So you can roll back to a previous state and, and recover your broken operating system. Um, Windows probably does this for you in the background without you knowing. And <laughs> they like to back things up to their cloud called OneDrive. And I noticed some Windows machine I was looking at, the user had never chosen to back up to OneDrive, but it did it for them anyway without asking as usual. And then of course you have to try and find a way to get that deleted if you don't want a copy of your system out there in the internet somewhere. <clears throat> uh, Linux doesn't do things like that to you. If you want to back up to a cloud system, you have to choose to do it and then it's easy. Otherwise, it doesn't do it for you secretly without warning you. So that's how to make a backup using TimeShift. And <clears throat> I have used this twice, I think, this year, where I've actually had to roll back to a previous version because I have messed things up. And then I can uh, do it again, install it properly. Uh, but I was, I was really messing around in the system, which uh, you don't want to do as a new user and you don't need to. But it's, it's reassuring to know that I've got this here. So if I do mess things up, I can, I can fix it. So that's enough for this short video. Hope you enjoy using Linux and can feel more relaxed about it, knowing that you can back it up with time shift and, and roll back at any time if, if you get something wrong. So please like and subscribe if it's appropriate, and I'll see you in the next video.